So you ordered your FX30, but you're not quite sure what memory card you need for those high 4K 10-bit 422-bit rates? Well, let's look at what memory cards are the best for your camera. Welcome to the channel where I help you learn how to make good videos. And first off, I do not have an FX30, nor have I used one yet, but after researching the manual, I found that it has all the same codecs and bit rates as the A7S III and FX3, which is what I'm shooting on right now. So I do know what I'm talking about. And all the cards I'm talking about today are listed in the description. So if you decide to purchase through any of those links, it won't cost you anything, but it will greatly help out the channel. And if I learn of any compatibility issues with any cards and the camera later on, then I will We'll post that in the description so be sure to check that out as well but just like the a7s3 and fx3 this camera has dual memory card slots that can take either sd or cf express type a cards so keep in mind that you'll need to have two of the memory cards that are recommended if you want to be able to have backup of your footage while filming looking at the manual for the fx30 the highest listed recording bit rate outside of the s and q mode is 600 megabits per second when shooting in the xavc si mode at 4k 60 frames per second when it comes to choosing a fast enough memory card for your camera, it is really important that you understand the difference between megabits and megabytes. Let old me explain it. So eight bits equals one byte, and therefore eight megabits equals one megabyte. Megabits, little b, megabytes, big b. People often see that their camera records at 100 megabits per second little b and think, oh, I need a card that records at 100 megabytes per second, big b, when actually 100 megabits per second equates to 12.5 megabytes per second. So looking back at the manual, when you divide by eight, that highest bit rate of 600 megabits per second equates to 75 megabytes per second. And you need to have a minimum sustain write speed that is higher than your camera's maximum recording bit rate so that you won't have any dropped frames or errors in your videos. The V90 on this UHS-2 card means that the minimum sustained write speed is 90 megabytes per second, which is higher than the FX30's max recording speed of 75 megabytes per second, so you know you're good with this card. And although the V90 card will have you covered in all the normal recording modes, the S and Q mode has much higher bit rates because of all the extra processing going on in camera. When you combine the S and Q mode with XABC SI and 4K at 100 or 120 frames per second, you have a bit rate of 1200 megabits per second or 150 megabytes per second. And even in the XABC SI and HD at 200 or 240 frames per second, you still have a bit rate of 890 megabits per second or 111 megabytes per second. Because of these higher bit rates, that V90 SD card that I mentioned and just won't cut it. So if you plan on using those S and Q modes, you'll need to go with the much more expensive CF Express Type A cards. However, you can still get 4K up to 120 frames per second, as well as Full HD up to 240 frames per second in the IPB mode if you switch to XAVC-S. And you might be wondering, what's the difference between IPB and All I? And basically, IPB is a different type of recording that uses a lot more compression than the All I, which gives you smaller file sizes, but also lower image quality. And if you wanna know more about the differences between All I and IPB files, I have another video I made explaining it in depth that I'll have linked below for you. So basically, the CF Express Type A card will allow you to shoot in every mode that the camera has to offer. And if you go with the UHS Type 2 SD card, it'll allow you to shoot in every mode the camera has to offer, except for those All I, S and Q modes that I mentioned earlier. So now let's look at what size memory cards you'll need. Based on the bit rates listed for the camera, a 256 gigabyte V90 SD card will give you 57 minutes of 4K at 60 frames per second in all I, and two hours and 22 minutes of 4K at 24 frames per second. And you'll get half those times if you decide to go with the 128 gigabyte V90 card. However, if you wanna be able to shoot all the modes this camera has to offer, you'll need that CF Express Type A card, which right now has capacity options from Sony ranging from 80 to 640 gigabytes. They're much more expensive than SD cards, but that's because they're giving you up to 400 megabytes of sustained write speeds. So this 160 gigabyte CF Express Type A card will give you 35 minutes of 4K at 60 frames per second in all I, and an hour and 28 minutes minutes of 4K at 24 frames per second. And you'll get double those times if you go with the 320 gigabyte version. Now, I wanna remind you that I have not used the FX30 yet, but I'm on the FX3 right now, which is basically just a full frame version of the FX30. And I haven't had any issues with any of the cards I'm recommending, so I don't see any reason why they won't work in the FX30 as well. And I've used Lexar cards in all my Sony cameras for years, and Philip Bloom even said he used pro-grade cards in the a7S III with no issues. So all these should work fine with the 
FX30. So to sum it up with all that in mind, I'd suggest this 256 gigabyte UHS-2 V90 card to be able to shoot in any normal video mode or this 160 gigabyte CF Express Type A card to be able to shoot in any possible mode the camera has to offer. And again, be sure to get a second card if you want to have a backup recording of your footage. And there's also a CF Express Type A card reader in the description to be able to transfer your footage to a computer, but you can always use the USB Type C port as well to transfer from your camera to computer. Again, it doesn't have to be these brands. I'm just trying to find the best deal with links to all these cards I mentioned in the description, but I'd be surprised if you don't have any questions after all that. So if feel free to post them down below and I'll try to clarify anything that I can. But if this video is helpful, then please help me out by hitting that like button. Subscribe if you're new. I've got a private Facebook linked below as well that I can help you out on your filmmaking journey. And with that, I'll see you soon.